I'm Scott Moore, and I'm a performance engineer. I help to make software and applications faster, better, more resilient. Lately, there's one thing on my mind. Where's the best barbecue at, man? So I'm going across the country, talking about performance engineering and barbecue. Join me as we take the performance tour. Performance Tour is still in Las Vegas, covering the Dynatrace Perform 2020 conference at the Contemporary Cosmopolitan Hotel. Before we get started, how about a diversion from the conference for a little fun? Just down the street is the Shelby Heritage Museum, which houses dozens of amazing and rare Shelby American vehicles. Shelby is synonymous with performance and speed. They recently came into the spotlight with the movie Ford vs. Ferrari, starring Matt Damon and Christian Bale. Let's take a quick tour. So when I used to have my company Load Tester Incorporated, and I had the colors for that, this is the model car and the colors that I chose for this, and I was actually planning on making this my car mascot of Low Tester. Maybe one day, if I get enough sponsorship, Performance Tour will have this car as their sponsor again. There's one individual I have to speak with while I'm here. Andy Grabner is a technology evangelist and DevOps activist for Dynatrace, and he is a rock star at the Perform Conference. He was nice enough to let me pull him aside for an interview. So I'm on the performance tour. I am in Vegas, and I am covering the Dynatrace Perform event, and I'm here with one of the premier technical evangelists of our time, Andy, tell the, my audience who you are and what you do for Dynatrace. Well, they didn't know that I'm a, previ a premier evangelist, but uh, thank you for that. So who am I? Um, I'm Andy Grabner. I've been working in the performance world for the last 20 years. I actually did eight years with a company back then was called Segway, which mm -hmm. then became um, Borland, now Microfocus. So we did a lot of performance testing. I was actually initially a tester on their, test on their testing platform, then became a developer, then an evangelist. So kind of evangelizing how we can use performance testing tools better. Uh, after that, I switched over to Dynatrace. So that was about 12 years ago. That's why the, the last, wow. over the last 12, uh, 20 years in total, I've been working uh, in performance and trying to evangelize the world because I believe the world deserves better running and performing software. And that as more and more people coming in the industry that are developing new software, and I think we need to keep re-educating them about how to do, how to do performance well, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, because in the end, they are going to be measured about how are their application services performing and uh, how they're making people happy. Well, I remember all those companies, and I remember uh, all the years back before Dynatrace, and so you've been doing this for quite some time, and I can already tell you're passionate about this. <laughs> so I've just got a few questions for you, and uh, the first one is, because you travel a lot, you talk to a lot of customers, you get a lot of feedback, what are the top couple of things, two or three things that keep coming up over and over where companies are struggling with performance and you just keep hearing it as a pattern and you're trying to address that? Yeah, I think the number one is completely unrelated with technology is culture. That's culture. Just what just comes up all the time. Interesting. And culture means, I think we are all still stuck in like old siloed thinking, especially organizations that have been in existence for a while and have now the need to transform over to become digital companies. But they're still, they're not naturally born software companies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Where you just have, you know, young talent that just from the start does agile development. They do test driven development. They do continuous delivery. So there's a lot of companies that have, you know, great people, but 
they've been around for a while and they have like an, a siloed mindset maybe, mm -hmm. uh, let's call it like that. Right. And so the culture is not right to shift into where we need to be right now, which means from my perspective, we as organizations need to make sure that everyone that is delivering value to the company through software is responsible for directions end to end. Right? We right. try to educate folks, developers, hey, don't just write code. Think about what can potentially go wrong with this particular code change in production, in a further down environment, maybe before production, and how can we prevent this? So I think we need to broaden our scope. Um, and that also means it's a cultural change because I'm not just paid for coding anymore. I have to think about more things. And eventually, I think we need to make also the engineers responsible for production. We obviously need to provide them with the tools, with the, the platforms, and with the framework around it that actually makes this possible, right? Uh, but I think that's the way to go because also that's the path we, we chose. So right. culture is a, is a big thing. You're trying to make it easier for them. And that kind of matches what I'm hearing because, you know, I'm in a booth at the conference and mm -hmm. I'm hearing mostly from, from Dynatrace customers. We use Dynatrace, but we use it mostly for triage and yeah. production. And it's very effective at finding things. Yeah. Uh, but our group is disconnected from the QA team and the yeah. developers. So we're not necessarily finding the bottlenecks early. They're still finding them in production. Yeah. So how do we try to fix that? Yeah, and also interestingly enough, right? we've been around for a long, long time. I've been with the company for 12 years. The company itself has been in existence for 15. Um, when we initially started, when I started 12 years ago, our product back then, Epmon, was actually targeted initially for the load testing space. I see. Right? Yeah. So actually, we started with how can we help load testers to not only test in black box application, but get insights and then figure out what's wrong early on, like at least before production, right? doing load testing. Over the last couple of years, you know, with our new you know, shift towards the Dynatrace software intelligence platform, we targeted more the operations folks, where right? we, we, we built the AI engine that can really make sense of all the data in large environments and then pinpoint problems in production to then, as you said, three years faster. So right. now what we are seeing, though, we are seeing, and that's what I've been trying to promote over the last couple of years, is a shift left. Mm -hmm. Shift left means we need to use monitoring data automatically integrated in your delivery pipeline from dev to QA to staging and basically understand the quality and the impact the code change has in every environment. Give this feedback directly back to the engineers or the QA team right, so that they can make better automated decisions on is this a good build, yes or no. Mm -hmm. So yes, I completely agree with you. We need to shift left. We need to make sure that also these you know, teams before production can leverage tools like Dynatrace. And they're, they're talking, and the communication happens, yeah, and exactly. that they know about each other and what they're doing, especially exactly. in the larger companies. Exactly, right? and if you think about QA, if you, if you think about load testing, we have an amazing set of data in production. We know what actually happens in production. So That's some right. of our customers are already extracting production data to then model their workload for pre-prod performance testing. Absolutely. I mean, that's, yeah. right, that's, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. Okay, so let's change the focus just a little bit. What about companies that maybe they are still siloed or maybe their business model um, keeps them in the waterfall software mm -hmm. development life cycle? Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe they're never going to go cloud yeah. for some reason that's good for their business. How does Dynatrace meet the needs of those companies? Yeah. First of all, I want to agree with you, right? I mean, there are companies where it doesn't make sense to adopt these new technologies, right? Maybe the business model, whatever it is. We perfectly support that. Why? Because, again, as I said earlier in the, in the previous section, right, where we started as Dynatrace was obviously 15 years ago, right. and we evolved into where we are now, so we are still covering the complete technology stack. So our one agent technology, while you can roll it out simply on a Kubernetes cluster in the cloud, you can also roll it out on your Windows machines that you have, on your VMware environments that you have, on all of your different virtual machines or also physical hosts. We monitor everything from your classical WebSphere application server, from your Citrix environments, from your SAP environments. We have it all covered because we know a large number of our customers and organizations out there that are not yet our customers, they are running you know, traditional stacks and they may will run it, as you said, for you know, a while longer. Mm -hmm. So we also support this. We also support the mainframe. Our one agent gets visibility into the mainframe, especially very interesting in these financial organizations, right? Where the mainframe is still backing the system, but then they also have this new cloud native technology and we're connecting both sides. So you're not leaving them behind, no. which is great. But on the, on the other side of the fence, um, you, you just posted recently on social media, mm -hmm. 
don't be afraid to embrace change. Yeah. It can be hard, but it can be worth it. What did you mean by that when you said that? Yeah, well, I think somebody on Twitter pointed out, I used to say the word that I shouldn't use, no ups, right? And I right. said, don't be afraid of change. Change is something that we have to embrace because we need to change. If we don't change, if we are not making the move into the next direction, somebody else will. That's true for organizations where they don't change the business model and some competitor will overrun them. This is also true for people that work maybe in a role where they're really comfortable in. But guess what? If you are not changing the way you do things, if you still keep doing things manually, and then somebody else, a script kitty comes in and then automates all that, right? I mean, you need to change. You need right. to change before somebody else is changing faster. And I think the, um, on main stage today, I think it was Dave Anderson, he had a quote up from, from Darwin, where he said, oh, not Darwin, sorry, it was, it was somebody that he quoted. And he basically said, um, it's not the, the strongest civilization that survives, so the strongest species, it's the one that is adapting fastest to change. Adaptable. Adaptable, and I think that's also important. So you, you need to motivate, how do you motivate these companies to become adaptable? Is it um, just education? Is it through um, you know, person to person? Or how, how do you get that message out? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's motivating them by showing them some other examples. I had uh, Abigail Wilson uh, yesterday on stage from CFA Institute and Nestor Zapato from Citrix. Nestor especially, he talked about how they have started implementing bots that are automating repetitive tasks, mm -hmm. right? And with that, it's not that we are that they are, you know, you know, killing or, or kicking out people because they're automated their jobs. It's about them being now able to focus on things that matter more to the organization. Right. Because why should I spend manual time in doing the same thing all over again yeah. and then say I don't have time for the for, for the other things, right? right? So you're automating these things. I had a very uh, another thing that I want to say because people said how do I start? Donovan Brown from Microsoft, he was one of, of he was a guy on one of my podcasts. And he gave the advice, just take 15 minutes out of your day. 15 minutes is easy, it's a coffee break, right? Mm -hmm. and, and think about one thing that you can automate. Write a little script, or maybe take the first 15 minutes of the first week and learn a scripting language. And then the next week, you start automating a simple task that you're currently doing manually. This is a slow process, but still, you know, with every day, 15 minutes, Oh, it adds up. It adds up. Yeah. And automation can enable your company to embrace that change and exactly. do those more important things to move forward. Exactly. So, there, so there you have it um, from the lion's mouth, Andy. Okay. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you for being on the performance yeah. tour. One of the main reasons I'm at the conference is to make people aware of the newly released Citrix support within NeoLoad version 7.2. You know, many companies still use Citrix to deploy applications, both legacy and new, and these need to be performance tested just like your web applications. Now NeoLoad gives you the ability to performance test published apps and desktops. It uses some of the newest technology to make automation easier and reduce scripting time. That means you can begin testing earlier rather than debugging script code. I'm really excited about the OCR and synchronization features, and I hope you'll check it out. Well, we're on the performance tour and we're currently in Vegas at the Dynatrace Perform 2020 event. And I'm here with Neotis talking about their Citrix solution. And Citrix is something that's been on my mind a lot. And so Dynatrace has also released a Citrix solution. And I'm here with Chris to talk about that on the Dynatrace side. Chris, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what you do at Dynatrace. My name is Chris Jemanovic. I'm technology strategist at Dynatrace. And one of the responsibilities that I'm uh, caring here is to look at the enterprise applications that our customers are monitoring. Those applications happen to be delivered over Citrix quite often. So we came out with a solution that would help them to see what is the performance that end users are experiencing with the Citrix application delivery. So I deal with a lot of clients right now. Probably the second most common question I get is, can you performance test our web app? Then it's we also have legacy applications, and most of the time that's deployed through Citrix. So how do you address monitoring performance for Citrix deployed applications, and what, what 
kind of things are the top things you do monitor? Mm -hmm. So from the perspective how it works, we are fortunate that Citrix is pretty good at exposing the metrics about how it performs itself. So we are tapping into the APIs that they provide on their delivery agents and okay. import those metrics into Dynatrace using the open APIs that Dynatrace has. Then when we combine those metrics with uh, the other performance data that we collect, we have complete picture of the end-to-end -end application delivery also including the Citrix TM. Citrix has a lot of different components to it, as you know, right? So you've got the Citrix servers, the ZenApp servers, the Zen servers, and then you've even got like the ADCs that sit in front of that. So True. are you able to monitor all of that end to end? That's right. So from the perspective of recognizing all servers in the Citrix environment, when you install a Dynatrace 1 agent on the hosts that are involved in Citrix delivery, you get instant discovery of all the infrastructure end-to-end. -end. Some of those uh, elements that are involved in Citrix delivery are not uh, good for installing agents like uh, Citrix uh, Netscalers. For those, we have uh, remote monitoring plugins, which okay. can connect through the APIs, like in case of uh, Netscaler, and we get data out of those. And again, all this lands within the Dynatrace, and we can chart is all, it all for the end-to-end -end application performance picture. Okay, last question. Um, you've got the monitoring of Citrix, but you also still need to be doing performance testing of your Citrix application as well. So how do you um, integrate or work with performance testing of Citrix applications? So with uh, performance testing, the really question is whether the environment that is under the test is uh, standing the load that is created by simulation of the real user activity. And the ultimate uh, performance indicator of that uh, load carried is uh, the latency and response time that the end users are experiencing. That's right. For that purpose, our Citrix monitoring extension for Dynatrace is looking at real users who are using Citrix environment and monitor them in details. That is, every single application invocation from the uh, tested environment how much time did it take for the application to start, so application load, and further, what is the Citrix latency end-to-end -end when the application is being tested under that load. So from this perspective, it is an outside-in uh, visibility of the performance that makes sure that when you test your environment, it is ready for the true real user load further. So hopefully, if you get both the performance testing done early and often and shifting left as much as possible, but you're also monitoring it out in production. It takes all the guesswork out of what the performance should be for Citrix systems. And this is what we want to accomplish. So great job. Thank you for being on the show, Chris. Appreciate Thank you. It. After the conference, Henrik and the guys decided to take a break and do some skiing in the mountains of Utah. And since we couldn't find any barbecue, hey, let's enjoy some action footage instead. Yeah.